Hey, what up everyone? Glory Projects here, and today, honestly, it's a special commentary. So, uh, shouts out to the people that are up in the description. It's as simple as that. But, you know, today, I'm going to go over several key components on how to improve your KD ratio and get a good score streak in Black Ops 2. Now, you guys could honestly use these uh, tips in any other Call of Duty game, any other, you know, first-person shooter game, but just take this for Black Ops 2. Because that's what it is. You know, before I even get started in this commentary, I want to point out several things. You know, in this video, we did lose. I got a loss up on here. But the main goal about me posting this video is to tell everyone how to achieve a good score streak and an amazing KD ratio. Alright, so in the end, I promise you guys, y'all probably give me some complaints about saying, you know, this wasn't Team Deathmatch. Stop camping, fool. Get out the lobby. I hate you. Just stuff like that. I mean, in the end of this game, on the other team, I got a lot of hate mail. They were just like, you suck. This ain't team deathmatch. Stop camping. And, you know, I just told them, I was like, you know what? I'm telling you guys this, too. I'm sorry if I do make or made anyone mad by doing this. But this video, it does have a sole purpose of proving on how the kill streaks or score streaks really work. That's just simple. It's as simple as that. You know, I tell I tell everyone this. I mean, I tell everyone. Everything begins with a good class setup. If you don't have a good class setup, you would not win. You will never win. I mean, that's it's simple. If you're running a gun that you do not personally like, you will not win. I don't care if another dude, you know, went 187 and 0 with, let's say, the Scar-H, and you try the Scar-H, you do not like it, you will not do good. I mean, it's simple as that the classes that I post tell you guys to check out it's because I like them you know what I mean I figure that if I like them you guys may like them it's not it's not the best gun in the game but if I like it enough I'll post it out with you guys so honestly if you guys are ever if you guys ever plan to do this I would honestly work on unlocking a silencer for your gun and running ghost with it you know personally for me suppressors and ghost they go hand in hand and if you don't run them two together they will not work. I mean, that's just how it is for me. Like, let's say, you know, I'm running suppressor on my gun, and I'm not running ghost. I will not do good. If I'm running ghost, and I do not use the suppressor, I will not do good. It's just, they go hand in hand. And like I say, you know, if they're not running together, they will not work properly. You know, it's just, I don't know. It, it's just kind of how it is. Especially for me. But all the other perks that I use, and the attachments that I use, it's up to you guys. I mean... You know, what I use and what you guys use, it, it differs. You know, personal preferences. I can't really stress that much. But uh, as you guys can see, I'm currently using the Scar-H. And I'm using a Suppressor and Extended Max. And at the beginning of this video, before I even thought about, you know, even changing what I was using, I was actually using a Reflex Sight. You guys may say, well, what? How could you change from using the Reflex Sight to the Iron Sights? And, you know, I was getting ready to tell you guys this. The Iron Sights, well... They really don't fit to my standards, but, you know, I already told you guys this. It's personal preferences. They change. You guys are probably going to wonder, well, how they change like that? I'm going to give you a straight-up answer. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> that's as simple as that. I have no idea why they change like that. But that's just how it is. And uh, let's get into it more. The secondary that I'm using, well, I'm not using one. But when you do not use an equipment, they will give you a combat knife, and the combat knife is amazing. You can run faster with the combat knife. The combat knife's a beast, but I didn't even use it, so that's just how it is. Alright, but mainly, the whole reason I did not use a secondary is so I can free up some space in my pack for other equipment. And I'm using two wild cards, and it's Danger Close and Perk 1 Greed. With Danger Close, I'm able to use two lethal equipment, which are two Bouncing Betties. In Perk 1 Greed, I'm able to have two perks in the Tier 1. So, as you guys can, t as you guys can tell... I'm only using tier 1 and tier 2 of the perks. In tier 1, I have Hardline and Ghost. And in tier 2, I have Scavenger. Now, I'm not using any tactical equipment at all, but I'm using a lethal of 2 Bouncing Betties. Now, I'm going to stress this right now, how important Scavenger really is. You know, for me, Scavenger is just a boss. It, I just love it. You know, with Scavenger, I'm able to replenish both of my Bouncing Betties, which or actually one. One pack replenishes one, but I can go ahead and get more. But this saves my life several times. I can't stress this enough. If you camp, this is great for you because I absolutely love it. It's just simple as that. 
But anyways, you know, to get back on track and to stay on it. So honestly, I'd really work on locking Scavenger because it's a boss. I mean, I really can't say that enough. It saves my life. That's just what it does. But you know, honestly, I would love to spend a permanent token, or at least tell you guys to spend a permanent token on Scavenger or Ghost, or basically both. I mean, it's just kind of what you guys really want to do. But using a silence gun with Ghost and Scavenger, it's gold. It's basically gold. And you know, it's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. Jeez. It's unstoppable with Bouncing Bettys. And that's why, if you know how to use it properly, you will not die. I mean, you can just camp it up, and that's why I do camp. But the second thing I really want to get into here is to hold down one position of the map. If you guys don't know, in Black Ops 2, the spawn points, they change so drastically. They change so quickly. Let's say, uh, once you run to the other side of the map, they will already be spawning in the side of the map that you just left, and everything will be screwed up. Your whole tactics, you know, rushing, it's just, I don't know, rushing, it's really overrated. But uh, camping, it's underrated. Let's keep it like that. Let's keep it like that, please. But anyways, your tactics will be ruined. Everything will be compromised if you rush like this, especially in Nuketown 2025. This map is so small that if you try to get to the other side of the map, you'll be brought down. I mean, people, they just spawn out and keep on coming. It's just not good. You need to hold down one position, you know. Camp it for your team. That's what you do in a war, but we're not in a war. We're playing video games. But this is honestly one of the main reasons, well it is the main reason, why I'm using two bouncing Bettys. And I guess you could say that I am a camper, or you guys could say, you know what, Glory? I really realize, you know, how the spawn changes, you know, they're so drastically, and I respect what you do, what you do is right, and you know, for that, I thank you. But if your position, if you position your bouncing Bettys in the spot of the map that you're holding down, you won't have a problem with the spawn changes at all. They won't affect you. I mean, just camp it up. Please, just please try it. I can't stress this enough. Just please give camping a try. Everyone hates on campers, but you know what? Campers go 86 and 2. Spoiler alert. Campers go 86 and 2 and murk up the squad. <laughs> oh, God. That's, that's super funny. But right now, I want to get into score streaks. As you guys already seen in this video, I had two score streaks out at the same time. The first score streak that I had out is a computer controlled. And uh, this allows me to stack up on kills and it does not focus on the objective. But the second score streak, it's, uh, it's one that I can freely control. And since I'm able to control this piece of equipment, you could basically say that I'm more versatile and I have the ability to hold down objectives for the team. So let's get more into it. You know, in example, I'm holding down the flags and you know, the enemies are running up. Well, if they're trying to capture or so, I can just... Uh, you know with my freely controlled one I'm able to you know take them all out and I can eventually go to their spawn and spawn trap them so let's get a little bit more into depth even though I haven't even struck surface on this so the first score streak that I use is called the dragon fire and this is one that I freely control it costs 975 points well it doesn't cost anything it requires 975 points the second score streak that I use it's called the AGR and this is the one that's just the merc squad I mean it it goes by its own. You can either freely control it or the computer control it. And I'm telling you guys this. If you use the Dragon Fire and the AGR, let the AGR get controlled by the computer. If you guys freely control it, you will regret it. And this costs 1,000 points. Or it requires. I don't know why I keep on saying cost. But as you see, 975 and 1,000, that's super close. That's, you know, that's like a kill. Not even a kill. It's not even a kill. But anyways, that's it. When these two are out, it mercs. But the last score streak that I use, and this is the groundbreaker right here, it costs seven, it costs 1,700 points, and it's called the K9 unit. And you know, the K9 unit is pretty self-explanatory. And if I be able to rename this thing, I call it the Rape Squad, the Rape Unit, because this thing, this thing just mercs everyone. It gets like 1,500 kills per game. Maybe I'm a little uh, exaggerating there. It gets around, you know what, 20, 15, uh, 10. I really don't know. I'm giving numbers out. But, I mean, that's how it is, and that's why I camp. I want to get this. And believe it or not, I got this twice in one game. Twice in one game. That's amazing. <laughs> so, honestly, the AGR, to recap it with my kill streaks, the AGR is controlled by the computer. And the uh, Dragonfire, I control it by myself. The AGR, you know, just gets you kills. But with the, uh, what's it called? The Dragonfire, I'm able to hold down objectives. 
And you know, in this game, it's all about teamwork and holding down objectives. If you do not do that, you will more likely lose and everything will be screwed up. You know, this video is about done, and I don't have much left. But I really just want to say, you know, thank you to everyone that really helped me out. But, uh, I mean, that's about it. I hope these tips really worked. Hope you guys enjoyed my videos. And, you know, like always, stay tuned for more. And thanks for watching. Terrible effort. Regroup and rearm.